I know we've enjoyed the singing, the ministry of the choir today. Man, they just list, lifted up our spirits. I thank God for them and the music ministry. Amen. Come on, give God some praise for this choir. Amen. Bless them, bless them. Thank God for each and every one of you that are here today. Let us, let us pray. Dear gracious God, our Heavenly Father, we, we pause again to just say thank you, Lord. You're just so great, just so awesome, just so amazing, Lord. Our, our vocabulary can't even begin to describe you, but we just want to say thank you. We appreciate all that you have done for us, to us, and through us, Lord. And we thank you for bringing us out here to your house of worship, your house of prayer and praise. Thank you, Father God. I thank you for every soul that's in the house, Lord. And I pray that as I stand before them, before your people, Lord, I pray that you would give me preaching power again, anew, Lord, afresh from on high. I have no power in and of myself. I'm just a vessel of clay, but I realize with your touch, with your anointing, with your breathing, your power, your, your Holy Spirit in me, Lord, I know I can do great things. So use me, Lord, for your glory to speak a relevant word to these are your people. I thank you now for healing, restoration, deliverance. Thank you for salvation in this place, Lord. Thank you that all needs are met according to your word. It's in Jesus' name we pray and we give you pr thanks, Lord. Let everybody say amen. Amen. You may be seated. You may be seated. Amen. Good to have all of you in the house on this Sunday morning. Amen. Bless God. Bless God. You know, I, I, I just thank God that all of you are here today. Those that are here are here. And, and, and just thanking God for uh, your presence. I, I know um, whenever I know we as pastors and, and so forth, we always um, e expect uh, more than what we thought, and, and I'm going to tell you the truth, God has given more than what I thought today, amen, I, I, I'm, I kid you not, I, I got here early, and some people were already here at 8 o'clock, you know, before 8 o'clock, so, and, and I thank God for your faithfulness, I thank God for your diligence to, to come out to the house of worship on this Resurrection Sunday, amen, amen, amen. Not, not going to worry you long, I got in trouble for saying that before, and somebody checked me on it, so I, I'm going to worry you long. Not going to worry you long, I'm sorry. Not going to worry you long. I just want to talk to today about uh, some provisions that have been secured uh, through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Talking about provisions today. So if you're going to take a note, that you can entitle this uh, message, The Provisions of the Resurrection of Christ. And, and I, I, I dare say that as we talk today, it's not going to be an exhaustive account of all the pr provision secured through the resurrection. That would take forever and a day to go through all of our provisions. But I, I, I just want to lift up some obvious provisions, some obvious nuggets uh, found in the 20th chapter of the gospel according to John. John, the 20th chapter. We're going to be coming from there. So if you want to get ahead of me, go ahead and turn there. Um, but like I say, it's not going to be an exhaustive study or anything. Just want to lift up a few things. Um, but the point, and, and, and understand, I know it's not a glamorous title, but it's called Provisions of the Resurrection of Jesus Christ. Things that were provided through his resurrection. And the point I want to emphasize today and, and really emphasize to all of us that every man, woman, boy, and girl that ever is to walk the, the face of this terrestrial earth has been provided with blessings untold because of the resurrection of Christ. Now, I said everybody has been provided. Whether or not they accept those blessings, that's a different story. But everybody has been given access to those blessings of Christ because of his resurrection. Everybody in here has been blessed beyond our wildest imagination, and some of us don't even know it. When they were singing so amazing, you, you, it, it, you couldn't even get with it because you, your mind hasn't even gotten there yet. But we've been blessed with so many things untold that if you were to know it all right now, it would just slay you in the spirit. You wouldn't even be able to stand under all the blessings that God has in store for us. And, and so, but, so I'm not going to get into all the blessings of the resurrection. I just want to let you know that you're blessed because he got up. Tell somebody I'm blessed. I'm blessed. Come on, tell your other neighbor I'm blessed. I'm blessed. Uh, talk back to him. Tell him I can tell. I can see. Amen. I can see you're blessed. I see you're blessed. I, I want us to look at the record that John puts forth here in this 20th chapter. 
of, of the gospel according to God. I want us to look at that record, and we'll look at it in a minute, but I, I just want to say this. The chapter 19, the chapter before this, it closes with the hasty burial of Jesus Christ. You remember they, they rushed to get him off the cross and get him in the grave because it was the day before the Sabbath day, and, and, and they didn't want to dishonor the Sabbath day, so they, they, they arrived uh, uh, after he had died and, and said that Nicodemus and Joseph of Arimathea came and, and, and begged his body and, and, and others and different accounts from different gospels. But the, the point is that they came, got his body, took him off the cross, and they laid him in a nearby tomb. Some say it was the tomb of Joseph of Arimathea. Others say it was just a borrowed tomb, a nearby tomb. They did it for convenience. Um, but whether it was borrowed, whether it was whatever, it, it, it was only going to be used for a short time. So he didn't need a, a, a permanent tomb. but So they laid him there for con convenience, and that's how chapter 19 closes, where they buried him before the, uh, on the day of preparation, before the Sabbath day. And then chapter 20 opens and begins to recount the things that happened on that first day of the week, or Resurrection Sunday, as we call it, the day after the Jewish Sabbath day. And John identifies the first witnesses to arrive at the empty tomb. And let me say this. Let, if you read the four Gospels and read this account, they each give a different perspective. One, you know, they, one may say this, and other may agree and say a little bit more. They're not. In, in other words, God shows us that they just didn't carbon copy each other. If we all were to look at one event, we all would have a different perspective ourselves. And so we wouldn't tell the story the same way. So, so don't get caught up in that. But, but one thing that is a fact uh, that they all agree on, that the women were the first ones to make it to that empty tomb. Uh, y'all don't hear me today. Men, y'all don't hear me. They, they were the first ones to make it to the empty tomb, and they were the first ones to receive the message, the good news, to go tell somebody that Jesus has gotten up from the grave. Don't tell me women weren't called to preach. No, they weren't just called to preach. They were sent with the God. Oh, y'all, let me, let me hurry on. I'm, I, I, I'm about to stir something up in here. But I, I, wanted to, I want us to pick this up in the 18th verse of this chapter, uh, the 20th title, uh, 20th chapter. Remember, the title is Provisions of the Resurrection. In John, the 20th chapter, the 18th verse, it says, Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news I have seen the Lord, and she told them that she had seen, uh, that she had, that he had said these things to her. And note, verse 19, note verse 19. Now Mary Magdalene got the message, ran, told the disciples. Verse 19, on the evening of the first day of the week, when the disciples were together with the doors locked for fear of the Jewish leaders, Jesus came and stood among them and said, peace be with you. He was speaking to these same disciples who in times gone by had boldly stood up to demon-possessed people and told the demon, come out of them and go back to the pit of hell. He's speaking to these same uh, uh, disciples here that laid hands on the sick and watched the sick recovery cover at the touch of their hands. These are the same disciples who were ready uh, uh, to call down fire from heaven when there were folk that didn't quite agree with them. They had the power to call down fire from heaven. These were the same disciples who boldly declared, Lord, if they come to kill you, they're going to have to kill me too. Uh, I'm talking about they were bold uh, 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 when Christ was on the scene. They were bold when, they, when he was with them. And, 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 and that was before, but now. They are huddled behind locked doors, fearful for their lives. Uh, their world, their hopes, their future had just been shattered and destroyed just a few days before this. Their master, Jesus, had been murdered and crucified like a common criminal hanging on an old rugged cross. Uh, there, there was disappointment, and, 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 and he uh, the disappointment came because I, I believe that as they looked at the situation, Jesus didn't do anything to prevent it 
from happening. They knew that he could have called a legion of angels, ten legions of angels uh, from his father and destroyed everybody, but he didn't do it. He had all this power at his beckoning command, yet he did nothing to stop his haters from killing him. And, and I can and I, I just fathom what the, the, the disciples were thinking. I, they must have wondered in their, in their minds if, if they could do this to Jesus and he had all this power, imagine what they might do to us. Mm. They, they, they had fearful thoughts knowing that their lives were constantly in jeopardy. They were fearful, they were distraught, they were defeated, they were anxious, not knowing what may happen next. I wonder, have you ever been there in, in that place where things look bad or even worse than bad? They look worser. <laughs> than, oh, I, I didn't make it through English class, y'all forgive me. I, I just know things go from bad to worser. Uh, worse, Let, we may have some kids in here. They, they go from bad to worse. Uh, and, and, and they didn't know what to expect. And fear began to creep into their lives. They were afraid to do this, afraid to do that. Have you ever been there? They, they, you ever been there where you've been afraid to, to stay, afraid to, to go, afraid to hear the doctor's report, afraid not to hear the doctor's report, afraid, 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 and fear has crept into your life and caused you to put yourself, your life on lockdown. That's where these disciples were, in the midst of the fear-induced, self-imposed lockdown. But I want you to note something. Because Jesus got up from the grave, uh, the fact that he was resurrected by the Holy Spirit, by the power of God, he, uh, it enabled him to come where they were, in the condition they were in, and speak to their situation. Where are you going with this, brother preacher? Well, let's, let's take a look. They were fearful for their lives, yet Jesus stepped into the middle of the room in verse and in verse 19, he speaks a word into their life. And look what he says. He says, peace be unto you. Somebody say peace. Peace, peace. They were fearful. They're, they were anxious. They were nervous. Didn't know what to do. But he comes in and says, peace be unto you. And he repeated it again. If you look in the 21st verse, Jesus said again, peace be with you. Somebody say peace. And to make the whole thing complete, to make sure that they got this message of peace, Jesus repeats it again for the third time in the 26th verse when Doubting Thomas was present. Look, look what he says. He said, peace, in verse 26, he said, peace be with you. Somebody say peace. peace. What, are, what are you trying to say, brother preacher? Well, I'm not trying to say it. I am saying it. I'm saying that because he got up. He was able to speak into their troubled lives. He was able to reassure them of the peace that he gave them back in John 14, 27, when he said, my peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. This is when he was alive before his death. And he said, peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. I do not give it to you as the world gives, but let not your hearts be troubled and be not afraid. He was giving them peace. He spoke the same peace now that he previously spoke in their life during the midst of that storm. When the waves were lapping up against the ship and the wind was blowing the water, he stepped out on the water and said, peace, be still. It's the same peace that he's speaking of here. And I came to tell you, because he got up, he speaks that same peace to us today. Regardless of what you may be going through, regardless of how impossible your situation may seem, regardless of how dark the night may be, how lonely it is, how few friends you have encouraging you, he steps into the middle of where you are and speaks peace into your situation. Anybody in here need peace? Well, he provided peace through his resurrection. Let him speak peace into your life. What do you mean, brother preacher? Just let them speak peace. You need to be speaking peace yourself. Why? Why peace? Peace because God is still in control. I don't care how it looks like. I don't care how big, bad, and, and ugly the devil or the situation may look. God is still in control. Peace because he's working all things together for your good. Peace because he'll never leave you, nor will he forsake you. Peace because he's able to deliver you, and not just halfway, but all the way. Peace because he's able to keep you from falling. Peace because no weapon... 
formed against you shall, y'all not getting this peace yet. Peace because all is well with my soul. Peace, peace, peace. Tell your neighbor peace. Peace, peace, peace. Tell them peace be still. Yeah, 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 peace. God, he, because he lives, he, he has uh, uh, provided us peace. He gives us that peace that passes all understanding. We can't even comprehend it. You see some people that are just full of God's peace and you know they're going through. You know they may have lost their job. They, the, 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 they're not able to pay the house note for a couple of months and the bank may have written them a foreclosure letter and you know it yourself. And they may have had doctor uh, health issues, gone to the doctor and they shared it with you and they're going through health-wise, going through financially, going through insecurity of not having a job and you look at them on Sunday morning and they still have a smile on their face. They still praise in God. They still get. That's because they have that peace that passes all understanding. Peace the world didn't give and peace the world can't take it away. Encourage your neighbor and tell them receive the peace of the Lord. Come on tell them receive it. I know you look like you got it but peace, peace, peace. And, and, and so the first thing I, I want us to see here that provisions of the resurrection, the first thing, his resurrection provided us undeniable, unshakable peace in our lives. Somebody needs it. I don't know who you are, but somebody in here needs some peace. You're going through some turmoil. It may be on the job. It may be at home. It may be with your spouse. It may, I, I don't know where it is, but somebody in here needs some peace today. You need to holler out and claim peace for yourself and just say, peace. Claim it, it's yours. Peace, peace. Let, let me hurry on. Let me move on. But that's not all his resurrection provides. Look at verse 24 and 25. It says here, and I'm reading NIV, it says, Now Thomas, also known as Didymus, yeah, call me Thomas. Don't call me Didymus. <laughs> One of the twelve was not with the disciples when Jesus came. Now the first time earlier on in, in, the, in this chapter, Obviously, Thomas wasn't there. And so the other disciples told him, we have seen the Lord. But he said unto them, unless I see the nail marks in his hand and put my finger where the nails were and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. And because of this statement here, he's commonly known as doubting he had a lot of doubt, a lot of doubt. Even though they gave him witness uh, of seeing Christ, he still doubted. Uh, nothing, and, and I, 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 I look at Thomas's statement, and, I, and in general, I, I, I don't see anything wrong with it, in general. You know, because if somebody tries to witness something to me, I, I want to be a witness for myself so I, I know what I've seen and I can tell it for myself because sometimes you get secondhand information and it's not always accurate. And you standing on what somebody else says, and, and you end up looking like, yeah, y'all, y'all been there, huh? And, and so I don't, I, I don't doubt, I, I, I'm not faulting Thomas. It's good to know for yourself. But he says, unless I see, I won't believe. Up until then, I agreed with him because he's talking about seeing the things of God. When it comes to God, we have to have faith, and faith says, even though I don't see it, I know God said it, I know he's doing it, I know it's going to come to pass sooner or later, and even though I don't see it, I still believe it. I still trust him for what he said he'll do. And, and so that's where I have the fault with Thomas. This is something that God was doing, and he said, unless I see it, I won't believe it, I, I, I got to see it for myself. And Thomas uh, must have been a native Missourian from the show me state. You got to show me. We got some folk in the church like that. Show me. I don't believe it until I see it. But we have to learn how to operate on faith when it comes to God. And if you see it, it's not faith. Uh, Y'all miss that. Faith says I believe God even though I can't see him working. I don't feel him working. I don't hear him talking, but I still believe it shall come to pass. Tell somebody it shall come to pass. 
you got to have faith, got to have faith. But Thomas didn't have faith. And, and so notice in, in verse 26, 27, it said a week later, his disciples, the disciples of Jesus, were in a house again. And Thomas this time was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, peace be with you. I, I was going to take y'all somewhere when it said, uh, the first time we read it, it said the doors were locked the first time, and now here the doors were locked again, and Jesus stood among them. I, have you ever wondered how did Jesus get in the room? Have you ever wondered? I, I, I don't wonder. I knew how he got in the room. I, I know how he got in the room. Y'all don't watch Star Trek. <laughs> y'all can laugh at me if you want to. I've been trying to tell you when I get that glorified body, I'm a teleport. Let me move on. Y'all don't, but y'all. Oh. I'm trying to tell you God is amazing. And if man can think of teleporting, who already thought of it? Jesus teleported. I mean, Jesus stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then in verse 27, then he said to Thomas, put your finger here. I like, I like this fact that he's addressing Thomas. He addressed the one that still doubted him, the one that still had no belief yet. He came to see about Thomas in his unbelief. And he said to Thomas, put your fingers here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side and stop, believe, stop doubting and believe. He addressed the naysayer. Mm. I wonder if we have any naysayers in here today. Uh, don't believe that's of God. Don't believe God did that, said that, will do that. Mm. I, I declare he'll stop by to see about you. Yes, he will. If you don't believe, he wants you to believe. And he'll come by and show himself mighty in your life. Some of the things you've seen, you haven't been able to connect, but it was God operating in your life. I know you're going through some problems, some troubles, some issues that you feel like God has forgotten about you, but thank God you didn't go all the way under. And you didn't go all the way under because of the mercy and grace of God. Now after Thomas, Thomas felt his side and, and felt his hand. And after Thomas saw and felt the evidence for himself, look what he says here. Look what he says in verse 28. Thomas said to him, my Lord, and my God. In other words, Thomas saw the proof that he needed, and he cried out, my Lord and my God. The tangible resurrection of Christ proved beyond a shadow of a doubt who he was, the son of the living God, the one with God himself, Alpha and Omega, that he was a son of the living God and only the son of God, only God himself could lay down his life and pick it up when he got ready. Thomas knew that this was the Lord, my God, God himself, and he had to testify. And, and so he, there was proof that Christ had resurrected. What are you saying, preacher? I'm saying that the resurrection of Christ provided undeniable proof. Not only did it bring us peace, but it gave us proof of who he was. In, in t uh, Paul says in 1 Corinthians 15, 4, he said that he, he 15, 4 and 8, he says that he was buried, Christ, that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day according to scripture, and that he appeared to Cephas and then to the twelve. After that, he appeared to more than 500 of the brothers and sisters at the same time, most of whom are still living at that time, Though some have fallen asleep, then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles, and last of all, he appeared to me. This is what Paul is saying, that he appeared to me. He also appeared to those disciples on the, on the Emmaus Road as they journeyed. He talked with them about uh, uh, and, and showed them in the scripture that Christ must uh, uh, suffer all those different things. And, but, but the point is, is that he proved himself. He showed himself alive. And the resurrection of Christ provided undeniable proof of who he is, the only begotten son 
of Jesus Christ. He said, I am the one that was, once was dead, but I'm alive forevermore, never to die again. He proved who he was through his resurrection. So the resurrection provided peace. It provided proof of those who may doubt him. And then look at verse 21. Not going to be here. Um, amen. Verse 21. His resurrection does something more. In 21, it says, again, Jesus said, peace be with you. But look what he says here. He says, as the Father has sent me, I am sending you. What I get from that is that his resurrection provided us purpose. It provided us peace. It provided us proof. Now he provides us a purpose. No, Jesus said, the Father has sent me on purpose to fulfill a purpose and he did fulfill his purpose now he's saying I'm sending you look at your neighbor and say he's sending you yeah he's sending you I know you think he's sending somebody else I know you always think he's just sending a preacher and so and the evangelist and and, and other uh, ministers and so forth but no he said I'm sending you just like my father sent me. In other words, he's got a plan and a purpose for everyone that calls upon the name of Jesus. If you're in here today and you're saved and you're calling upon him, he's got a purpose for you. He designed you the way you are on purpose for a purpose. Tell, tell your neighbor you're not a mistake. Yeah, he designed you on purpose for a purpose. What's that purpose, uh, uh, brother preacher? Well, to represent him in this earth realm, to represent him wherever you may go. That's your purpose, to show his love, his kindness, his compassion. Yes, you ask the question, what would Jesus do? That's your purpose, to show what Jesus would do, to spread the good news that Christ is alive and that he's still able to save all that believe. He's still able to save from the guttermost to the uttermost. Because he got up from the grave, you now have purpose. Somebody say purpose. Oh, y'all not saying it like you me. You act like you're scared of purpose. Somebody say purpose. You have a purpose, a destiny in Christ. Because he lives, you have purpose. Just as he told them, go into all the world. He sends us to go into all the world today. You have purpose. I'm trying to pour this quart into a pint, so y'all forgive me. So his resurrection provided peace for all who would receive it. It, did not, it, it, it provided undeniable proof of who he is, the only begotten son of the living God. It provided purpose for all who call upon his name. And there, and there are many, many other blessings associated with his resurrection. As Reverend Baskin was saying, we can't even begin to tell all that salvation brought. But he provided uh, so many things uh, for us through his resurrection. But, it, but I, I want us to see something in verse 22. Verse 22. The last thing, and I'm going to leave you alone. And with that, he breathed on them. Uh, and said, receive the Holy Spirit. If I had time, if we had time today, we could go through a whole litany of things that we uh, included with receiving Holy Spirit into your life. But I just want to lift up one thing in general that I believe covers all the rest. His, first of all, his resurrection provided us peace for the trials and tribulations of life. It provided proof to all who believe that he is alive. It provided purpose to all who would follow him. And the last thing today is that his resurrection provided power. Somebody say power. Yeah, power, power, power. He gave them the gift of the Holy Spirit and empowered them to fulfill their purpose. He's never going to send you out on purpose without power. Y'all don't hear me. If he gives you purpose, he'll give you power to make it happen. Woo! He gave them purpose to go into all the world and spread the good news, the gospel. He gave them a promise in Acts, uh, first chapter, the eighth verse. He said, but ye shall receive he said, but you shall receive power 
when the Holy Ghost has come upon you. He gave them power. And if you're a born again believer in here, you need to know you have power. If you're born again, you've tapped into that unlimited, unrestrained power of the Holy Spirit. In other words, you can do anything if you have the faith to believe it. Power, power. What do you mean power? You have power, power to be his witness, power to lay hands on the sick. You have power in your words. Life and death are, are in the power of your tongue. You got power in your hands. He said you will lay hands on the sick and they sh Let, 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 me, let me save this for the 11 o'clock crowd. Maybe, maybe they know they got power. Maybe they need to use some power in their life. Maybe there's some devils acting up in their life, and they need to rebuke those devils. You got power to tell a devil to go back to hell and leave me, leave my family, leave my child. You got somebody yell power. said we got power to loosen the bind. We've got power to heal, raise up the dead. We've got power to put devils on, on the run, put them on notice. We've got power to change our area, our environment, our atmosphere. We've got, and that's what saddens me, sometimes we act like we don't have any power. Sometimes we're like these disciples hiding in a locked room, hoping the devil don't come by knocking on our door. But I tell you what, when you can stand up in the power and might of the Holy Spirit, you want the devil to knock on your... Show me another devil. But you have power. I'm through. Y'all sit down. I'm through. Let me... I I'm through. You have power to do what he called you to do. You have power to live for him. I know sometimes it seems like a struggle, but you've got power in you to live for him, to live a righteous life. You've got power to change your environment. You've got power to speak a word to your circumstances, and your circumstances have to change. You've got power to do whatever God has called you to do. The resurrection of Christ has provided many blessings for all of us. Tell somebody I'm blessed. That's right. Encourage yourself and tell yourself you're blessed. We're blessed because of the resurrection. But this one thing I do know, I've, I've talked about his peace, the proof through his resurrection, the purpose because of his resurrection, the power because of his resurrection. And I don't have another P word up here. I got another word that begins with S. Because of his resurrection. He has secured for us an eternal salvation. I'm saved. I'm saved. Anybody in here saved? And Reverend Baskin already walked on a little bit. Can I walk on a little bit more? We're already we're saved because he got, if he hadn't got up, wouldn't have been any need for us being here today. If he hadn't got up, it would have just been another death, another ordinary death. But they knew that something was different about this man. Even his, distract, his detractors, his antagonists, they said they went to Pilate. Let me slow down. They went to Pilate, and they said, Pilate, allow us to put a guard on the tomb. Because this, uh, this pretender said that in three days he's going to rise up again. And we just want to make sure he doesn't get up out of the grave. We want to make sure that nobody comes to steal his body. And Pilate said, you got enough men. Go ahead and do what you got to do. So they went to the grave. They went to the tomb. And they sealed the tomb, put a seal on it. And they put a guard posted in front of the tomb. And so Jesus stayed there all Friday night. He stayed in the tomb all day Saturday. But somewhere in the scripture it said somewhere between midnight and day early. Somebody say early. On that first day of the week, 
that day we call Sunday, uh, early Sunday morning, uh, the scripture said he stepped up Y'all know the story. Y'all know the story. Stepped up out of the grave and said, all power, all power, all power. Y'all don't hear me. He said, all power in heaven and earth is in my hand. All because he got up from the grave. Who wouldn't serve? a risen Savior like that, all power. And because he lives, because he lives, we live today. Because he lives, we're saved. Songwriter said, because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because he lives, to your feet. Is there anyone here today that's not saved? You don't know Jesus in the pardon of your sin. Today we cel celebrate Resurrection Sunday. The day that the Lord got up out the grave and declared all power in heaven and earth is in my hand. The day he secured salvation for everybody. He secured it for all of us, but it's up to us to receive it. And if you're here today and you've never received the salvation of the Lord, we bid you to come at this time. Because you're here, you're here not by accident. You're here on purpose. I know you think an automobile brought you here, but it was God that brought you here. If you're not saved today, won't you come? Won't you receive Christ into your life? Won't you receive him? If you're here today and you're already born again, you're already saved, you've accepted Jesus Christ, we're asking, we're asking to search your heart and see if God, and you don't have a church home. Maybe God has laid it upon your heart to make Shiloh your church home. So we're calling for extension for extending the call for membership, call for salvation. Won't you come at this time? If you're saved, if you're saved and don't have a church home and you need a church home, won't you come? If you're not saved and you need a savior, won't you come? Because I know oh, 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 he holds the future and life. And life is worth the living just because he lives. Aren't you glad he got up? Aren't you glad God raised him up from the grave? Bless God. It was by the power of God. And he says that same spirit that raised Jesus from the grave will quicken, make alive your mortal body. You have Holy Ghost in you. Act like it. Live like it. Decree it. Speak over your circumstances. you got the power of God residing in you. Thank God for all of you today. We bless God for you. Thank God for the, the music ministry and all that help. And, we're, um, and, and these. Are we doing announcements? If you're here, just real quickly while you're standing on your feet, if you're here, we have several guests. We have, um, is it Gabby or Gaby? Gabby? Gabby Rivera? All the way from Peoria, or Bradley University. Amen. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. Guests of Lily Doss. And then we have um, um, 
I got Jamie, or Jamie and, hmm? Deontay, okay, Deontay, uh, and then, hmm, <laughs> woo, <laughs> oh, here they go, here, uh, Dakota, is it Dakota? Okay, that's cool, I like the name Dakota. Deont I like Deontay, too, I like Jamie, too, but anyway. <laughs> Yeah, I got to fix that up. <laughs> Amen. God bless you. Good to have all you with us today. Any other visitors in the house, wave your hand wherever you meet, may be. Any other visitors, God bless you. Good to have you with us today. Amen. Amen. God bless all of you. Good to see Lane with us back again. Amen. Bless your heart. All that, all that are visiting, we thank God for you. Um, please, if, if you're a visitor, you're always welcome to come and share with us here at Shiloh. We're glad to have you in our midst. Amen. We hope you are blessed by being here today because truly God has blessed us all. You are blessed. You are blessed by the best.